Let's go. Hello, welcome to this uh, talk, workshop, meetup, whatever it's going to be about using Sparkle to query uh, linked data, especially on Wikidata, and I hope you will all enjoy it. Uh, one thing that I should note at the beginning is that I am recording this um, and I hope to publish this recording. So if you're not okay with uh, your voice being recorded or published, then uh, it's best if you use the text chat and I will uh, keep an eye on that. And if you're okay with that, then feel free to use the voice um, chat as well. And I'll put this in the chat as well. Uh, for everyone, uh, for anyone who came in late. But uh, let's start. So what we're going to do is look at some uh, queries to explore the structured data on Wikidata. And you do that, that on this website, query.wikidata.org. Let me just put that here so it's in a larger font size. I hope that's uh, large enough for everyone to see. If it's not, let me know and I can zoom in a bit more. And this is where you write your queries in a language called Sparkle. And here on the left, uh, there's also a query helper. So you don't have to write Sparkle, which is uh, helpful for some simple queries. So suppose we were looking for uh, information about cats. Uh, so we can write cat, and then it guesses that, uh, are we interested in things that depict a house cat? Uh, maybe. For instance, there's Nyan cat and uh, where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Whatever this is. So these are some things that depict cats, but we could also search for a different Wikidata properties such as instance of, and then we will find all things that are an instance of a cat. So all cats and let's remove the limit and search for all of those. And then we get uh, about 150 results, and those are different cats, such as Peter and Peter the Second and Crimean Tom, and lots of them. FDC Willard is, I think, the cat that wrote a scientific paper, right? Yes, cat described by his owner, PhD Jack H. Etherington, as United States-based scientist and co-author of works on cryogenics. So the author wrote everything in his paper as a we prove, we find, blah, 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 and then realize, oops, I'm actually the only author. And then he put his cat there as well. So it's two authors and it's correct to use we. And uh, that's how we have uh, this cat, a contributor to the field of cryogenics, apparently. Uh, so we could search for all cats which have notable works, maybe. Let's try that. Uh, so we would go up here and show the notable hello work of these cats and run the query again and we still have 150 results but most of them do not have a notable work in fact okay fdc willard is the only cat with a notable work that's maybe not um the best example let's remove that and show something else maybe the date of birth of the cat and the date of death as well. And run the query again. Otherwise, we just get this preview of 20 results and we would like more than that. Oh, now we have 152 results. So I guess there must be some cat with um, more than one date of birth or date of death. Uh, let's see if we can find that. This one. This one has two dates of birth, 20, 2008 or 2009. And in that case, we get two results from the query. Um, yeah, that's too bad. Um, but let's uh, maybe try to look at, yeah, that's true, they have nine lives. So maybe we should get uh, even more results than that. Let's maybe look at the query on the right here and uh, just ignore this for a second and we can get rid of this which is just an artifact of the helper and um, try to understand the sparkle that's happened here so what we're looking for is any item and the question mark here means that this is a variable it can be anything which has this triple p31 stands for the property instance of uh, which you have on the left here, and then Q146 is the Q number of house cats. So we're searching for 
anything which is instance of house cat. And if we were to add a second line here, uh, such as, um, let's see if we can find a useful example. Um, cats which are internet memes. Sure, let's search for that. Uh, so you could add a second line here, house cat still instance of is the same property, but I can also type instance of and then control space to get this auto completion instance of and then I'm interested in internet meme and control space again gives me this uh, suggestion here. So now we have two lines for house cat and so now we're searching for cats um, which are both or for items which are both cats and internet memes or we're searching for any way to fill this variable so that both of these statements exist in Wikidata, if that makes sense. And we get three results. And we still have the date of birth and the date of death. And these triples look a bit different. Um, so if we remove that for a second uh, or copy this out, then this means we're searching for any way to fill this variable house cat so that a statement date of birth exists, but then we, we don't care what it is. It can be any date of birth and we're just putting it into this variable, but it has to exist. So now if I was to run that query, we would get only one result because these two cats here don't have a date of birth, but this one does. So that's now the only result. The one cat that is an internet meme and has a date of birth, and that's probably grumpy cat, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's grumpy cat. And I think we have one image of Grumpy Cat, which isn't that great because um, all the good images are copyrighted, of course. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the basics of uh, how this query language Sparkle works. You're kind of doing pattern matching on the full data in Wikidata and saying it has to match this pattern where there can be anything in the first position, but then um, the instance of and the house cat has to be in the second and third position and you're putting the WD in front of it to say that it's specifically a Wikidata item, this Q146, and for the statement you use WDT instead. And it also has to have this statement that it's an internet meme and also it has to have a date of birth and the date of birth can be anything but it has to exist. And uh, for this pattern, there is exactly one match in Wikidata, and that's what this query finds. Does that make any sense so far? Someone's typing in chat. Um, let's see what's going on in chat. Uh, I need to scroll down. How to get all cats with missing date of birth. So that would be slightly different. Um, we would first um, comment this out with this uh, hash character and let me remove the query helper because it's getting a bit annoying that it pops uh, close and open all the time. Um, so what we have down here is uh, optional date of birth and date of death. So that means if this statement exists, then add the variable to the query. If it doesn't exist, that's still fine. And by default, uh, like up here, it's required. And if we instead want to have all cats where the date of birth is missing, uh, we can use something like this date of birth here, but instead of the word optional, we use minus, or we use filter not exists, which means pretty much the same thing. Not quite, but I don't think we have to go into difference here, but minus is usually faster. So let's go with minus. So that's all the items that are instance of house cat, but minus the ones that also have a date of birth. And that's hopefully going to be slightly less than 150. That's 53 cats, okay. And there's still a date of birth and date of death because we're selecting it up here. Doesn't make much sense right now, so let's get rid of it. So now we have a lot of cats. What we don't have is any uh, labels for the cats. So I could open one of them in a new tab and then wait for it to load and then eventually see, oh, this cat is called Miulek and 
He is named after Miao in French, apparently, and owned by these two people, whoever they are. Um, but we don't know when he was born. Uh, but it would be better if we can show this directly in the query. So we can comment out this line up here, uh, which is called the label service, and maybe also move it down to the bottom. Doesn't make a difference, just makes it nice to read, I think. And what this does is add um, more or less magically a new variable, which we can select up here, and which is called the house cat label. So the variable name of this item, but with a label added to it, and that will then include the label. And we can also add house cat description. And then we will get a lot of cats which don't have a date of birth. And if anyone recognizes some of these by the um, description or by the label, then you can maybe add the date of birth to them. Uh, I did not mention optional and filter not bound date of birth because I don't see a reason to. I'm not aware of any advantages of that pattern. So you can also do optional house cat date of birth and then filter that this date of birth variable is not bound. So uh, you're filtering for anything where this block didn't match. Uh, that also works, but um, it's longer and less readable, and I'm not really aware of any reason to use it. Maybe there is one, and I just don't know it. Um, anything else in the chat? Are labels fixed entities, or can be freely chosen? Um, the label is... Uh, what you can see at the top of the uh, item page up here, cat that won a stock picking contest. Uh -huh. And if I click edit here, I could add, for instance, a label in German, Orlando, probably because it's a name. Um, but the label can be anything that um, describes um, this item, so to speak. It doesn't have to be a unique label, so you don't have this thing like on Wikipedia where you have uh, New York City and then New York in parentheses state and New York, Ohio and whatever else. Um, you can have a lot of items labeled New York, for instance. There's New York the state, this immigration page, a team formed for the World Series of Football in 1902, an album, thriller film, blah blah. All of these can have the same label New York as long as they also have this description down there which tells you what kind of item it is. Does that answer the question, hopefully? Uh, yes, and the description can be blank too, like here, for instance. Let's maybe add a description here. Katze, die einen... Uh, what's a stock picking contest? What's stocks again? Aktien, I think? I don't know. Wettbewerb der britischen Zeitung, the Observer, gewann. That's a cat that won a contest by the British newspaper, the Observer, and I don't care what contest it was. If anyone wants to improve that description, uh, feel free to. But now it has a German description, which is better than nothing, hopefully. And we know absolutely nothing about this cat, except the owner. We don't know when it was born or died or anything. Um... Okay, let's quickly go back to this one and uh, say again that we want the cat to have a date of birth. So now we have these uh, three patterns which all um, limit what the house cat looks like. Um, but uh, there's two ways I could go from here. I think I'll go with this one first. Uh, so there's a way to um, abbreviate this, so we have to write less. Uh, what you would usually do, for instance, is instead of repeating this same uh, first part of the triple here, which is called the subject, you would end this one not with a period, which 
uh, makes it kind of the end of a sentence. Housecat is an internet meme. You would end it with a semicolon. And then if I press enter, you can see it puts the cursor right here because this means that the subject stays the same. And I'm adding another second and third part, which are called the predicate and the object like this. And it means exactly the same thing, um, but it's just shorter and doesn't repeat the housecat part. And you could read this as the housecat is a internet meme and has date of birth, blah, blah, instead of reading housecat is an internet meme and housecat has date of birth, blah, blah. You're just skipping the housecat part um, because it's the same with the semicolon here. We can do the same here and I remove this housecat and that should still find the same one result as earlier. And what you can even do if the predicate, so the middle part is also the same, if we're searching for uh, two values for this property instance of, then you can put instead of a semicolon, you can put a comma at the end. And here, if I press enter, the cursor ends up in the wrong misleading position, which is a shame, but I'll just put some spaces here manually. And what this means is it repeats not just uh, the house cat part, but also the instance of part. So this means the house cat is a cat and an internet meme, and it has a date of birth which is this date of birth. And you typically don't use this uh, comma that much. I mainly mention it for completeness and because I just think it's nice, uh, nicely symmetrical that you have the semicolon and the comma. But the semicolon is useful for a lot of things. Like if I wanted now the date of death as well, I could write date of death, date of death, and I, then I could press semicolon and add something else as well, um, whatever. Maybe we have an image. And you can chain a lot of these different statements behind one another if you want, like this. And I didn't add any of these to the select up here, which means we're not seeing them. Uh, yeah, but now we get all of these uh, statements including the image of Grumpy Cat. And uh, are there any questions so far? Not really, but I feel like I should take a short break and ask if all of that is clear. I haven't really gone through this in a structured way, but that's kind of the basic structure you have in a Sparkle query. You have this um, pattern to describe the data you're looking for um, with these um, different, uh, they're called triples, which have as part the subject, predicate, and object, and you can chain them together. And then on the outside, you have this select clause where you list all of the variables that you're interested in, and then you get them down here. And most of the time you want to add this label service as well. And if you uh, don't want to copy and paste it all around all the time, let's remove that. And the way you get the label service is also with this um, automatic completion from control space. So you write service or serve is enough, control space, and then this selection down here, a uh, suggestion down here is the label service. And if you want, you can adjust the language uh, of the labels here. I could replace this with uh, German, for instance, or Arabic. But usually uh, the auto language, which means whatever language you have up here, and then fallback to English is good enough. Searching for items with date of death or still living. I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean if there's a date of death, you want to see it, but if it's still living, then that's also okay? Um, that would be an optional and I just have to wait because I foolishly clicked the language selector up here and it takes ages to initialize itself. So right now I can't use the browser until that's finished. Um, but if I understand that question correctly, that would basically be uh, what optional does. Uh, let's maybe remove this line about the uh, internet meme. We search for any, let's say any
any cat with a date of birth, but let's say that the date of death is optional. And in this case, you can't use the semicolon trick. So now we have to actually write house cat date of death, put that in optional. And then we also want an image of the cat. And now we get 28 of them, probably mostly because we didn't make the uh, image optional. But now we get some cats which have a date of death, like this one, uh, which died in 1887. Or this one. Oh! Oh, I didn't know that. I think I've heard of this cat, the cloned cat, and it died this year, apparently. That's a shame. Um, but also we have a lot of cats which haven't died yet, and which probably means they're still alive. Let's... Yeah, I think 2005 is still plausible. There's nothing here like a cat from 1850s or whatever that's still listed as living. So I think that's uh, correct, if that was what you meant with that question. So that would be this optional block. And uh, we could work out their age. Uh, let's wait with that a bit. I want to show a bit more of these uh, patterns you can have because uh, so far all of these patterns have started with uh, this house cat, but that's not the only option. Um, let's add maybe the cat's owner. Control space again. Owned by, call that an owner. And we can also add uh, more of these triples which uh, start with the owner. For instance, we can say that the owner should be instance of, it should be a human, probably. It would actually be more interesting to search for owners that aren't humans. And let's say the owner should have country of citizenship Sweden, maybe. I think there was a Swedish cat down there. No. Okay, let's try a different country. Finland. United Kingdom. There we go. One cat. The tenth chief mouser to the cabinet office. So you're not restricted to matching on just one item. Now we're searching for statements of the owner as well. Or we could even say... Um, the country of citizenship can in fact be any country and then add a restriction on that country and say it should be part of, I think it's part of, might be member of, I'm not sure, let's try it, part of the European Union. Hmm, is this correct? Who is supposed to be the owner? Actually, let's not go to the item. Let's add that to the uh, select up here. We would like to have the owner label and the country label. Which, who owns this 10th chief master to the cabinet office who is still a EU citizen? That seems suspicious. Alistair Darning, United Kingdom. Hmm. That's not correct, is it? United Kingdom hasn't been in the U EU since one year or so already, hasn't it? It's just been uh, some transition period for the next, uh, well, until in a few days, but... Can we find the correct United Kingdom item? This one. Uh... Or maybe part of is actually the wrong property and it should be member of. Let's try that. That takes a bit longer apparently. Not sure why. It takes a lot longer for some reason. Might be that my laptop is overloaded a bit. Okay, now we get five cats. Uh, Karl Lagerfeld. Okay, the United Kingdom is still there. And then Estonian Prime Minister and two French cats. Yeah, this says end time, 31st of January 2020. So, hmm. Should this statement be deprecated so that's no longer returned? I'm not sure, actually. I feel like it should be. 
member off. Let's search for member off. There it is, United Nations, NATO, Commonwealth of Nations, Council of Europe, blah, blah, blah. Lots and lots of things. There's the European Union end time. Yeah, it has an end time, but it's not deprecated or anything, so it's still returned by the query. Hmm. Deprecated would be wrong? Why? Well, the alternative would be to make everything else preferred. So the way that... Um, maybe this is a good time to explain that. The way that... Uh, we are searching these statement is that if you use this WDT um, with the property ID, you get what are called the best rank statements. And that is, um, if there are multiple statements on Wikidata, they can have this different rank. There are three of those, um, preferred, normal, and deprecated. And if there are any preferred rank statements, like for instance, uh, the latest life expectancy, there's one that has preferred rank. And then if you query for life expectancy with this uh, WDT prefix, then you get only this best rank one, the one with the preferred rank, and all the other ones are ignored. So if you have, for instance, yeah, a list of life expectancies, then by default, you get the current value or the best value. And that's what you want for a lot of queries. And if there aren't any preferred values, then you get all the normal rank values, which is what happened down there with this part of or member of. And if a statement is deprecated, which means it's uh, still saved for some reason, but we don't, uh, we aren't interested in it most of the time, it's not correct or not up to date or something, then it's never going to be returned with this WDT prefix, even if it's the only statement or the only statements that exist are all deprecated, they're not going to be returned. So that's what you get with WDT. And there are other options to query all statements in more detail. I guess we will see that later, but maybe not right now. So that's why I'm thinking if we were to change the statement to deprecated rank, it would uh, drop out of the query. Or if we changed all of the other uh, member of statements to have preferred rank and left the European Union one at normal rank, then it would also drop out of the query. And... Okay, there's a ticket apparently for an outdated rank. I'm not sure if I remember that. Um, let's maybe leave Brexit politics aside. Um, I mainly just wanted to show that you can um, continue these patterns with other variables, not just the one that you started out with. Um, we can, could you elaborate more on finding the correct query statement for finding members of an item, let's say members of German Bundestag, I'm confused by all the alternatives, part of member of instance of? Uh, well, that depends on how it's modeled in Wikidata. What you would usually do is look up some item that you know is going to be returned by the query, such as Saskia Esken who is a member of the German parliament and see what exactly that information looks like. So what kind of property is used there? Uh, and we have occupation, position held member of the German Bundestag with start time, parliamentary term, parliamentary group, and electoral district and everything. And there's also member of, but there's not a member of the Bundestag. So in this case, the correct position would be, the correct statement would be position held. So um, let's do that in a new tab. We could search for any item. Uh, let's call it MDB. And we will want the label as well, where the MDB is, first of all, instance of a human and also position held a member of the German Bundestag at the label service as well. And then let's add a limit of, let's say, 500 maybe, because 
this is going to find all the people who were, or in theory at least, it could find all the people who were ever a member of any Bundestag. Uh, starting from the first one, I assume we don't have all of them in Wikidata yet. Um, but we probably have some of them at least. Is there Adenauer here? Yes, Konrad Adenauer, for instance. So if you were interested in all the members of the Bundestag ever, then this might be your query, except that we probably don't have complete coverage yet. If you're interested in specifically the ones, the members of the current one, then it would look a bit different. Uh, then you would want to search for this uh, qualifier as well, that the parliamentary term is the 19th one, the current one. And to do that, uh, you need to switch to this other version of uh, statements, which I already mentioned, where you don't get the best rank statements, you get all of them. Um, and the way to do that is to replace this WDT with a P. And then the value isn't going to be directly this value member of the German Bundestag. The value for this predicate, it's still the uh, it's still the same property, position held, but it's a different prefix. And now the value is going to be, let's call it a statement. And then this statement is going to link with PS, P39, same property ID, PS, is going to link to the value. And from the same statement, there's a link with PQ for qualifier, parliamentary term, uh, 19th German Bundestag. And so you have this um, node in between, which then carries not just the main value of the statement, but also all the qualifiers. And it also has references, which we're not going to look at right now. But I could also say, I don't want this statement to have uh, the Wikibase rank, Wikibase deprecated rank. I don't care if it's uh, normal or preferred rank, but I don't want deprecated rank um, because that probably means the statement was never true or something. So let's uh, remove those just in case. And then we should get some, how many do we have? I think slightly over 500, so let's make the limit 700. I think we have actually 600 and something. Oh. Huh. Uh, well, I mean, I meant 1,000, not 100. 734, is that true? Or are there some duplicates here? Do we have 734 members of parliament? That seems very high. Um, let's add here distinct, just in case. So we're not searching... Um, you're only interested in the different members of the Bundestag, but that probably makes no difference in this case. Oh, 733. I think we had 734 just now. Yeah, okay. So one was actually in there twice for some reason. Um, there is a count, yes. We can say you have to put it in parentheses and then count of, let's just say star, as count and the parentheses are necessary so that uh, it knows when this variable name is finished uh, or count of mdb that should be 734 or count of distinct mdb and then that should be 733. Uh, wikipedia says 709 so we are probably we probably want uh, also minus any statement that has a qualifier end time. And I'm just guessing that this is the qualifier because I haven't seen it here, but I have seen start time. Oh yeah, up there, there's end time. So end time, uh, we're searching for any statements that don't have an end time yet, because that would presumably be members or politicians who left the Bundestag again. I'm not sure if I believe that that's 24 of them. That might be the case. Okay, now we have 716, which is closer. It's still not the same as the 709, but um, 
I'm not sure what else the difference would be. If we look for them again, well, well, we can also try to remove more, like saying, if it has an end cause, we also don't want it, and if the MDB has a date of death, then we also don't want to include them. 715, so we filtered out one more with that. But there's still some extras. Hmm. I can't think of the reason for that right now. Uh, we could say we that we don't want uh, to remove the deprecated rank, but that we actually want to require the statement to have Wikibase best rank, and that's linked uh, somewhat differently, which is a bit weird. Um, okay, now we get 711. It's so close, but it's still not 709. Uh, missing end dates. Change party. I'm not sure how change party is modeled. Um, I don't remember any who change party where I could check that as an example. But I would expect if there's two statements for the um, being member of parliament, then one should have an end time if it ended because they switched party or something. Let's try distinct again. That's still 711. Mm. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't have any good ideas for what could be the difference here. I guess you would have to, you might have to go to Wikipedia. I assume they have a list of all of them and compare the names somehow, which would take a bit. Mm. But I can't think of any other way why this query would include extra people. Uh, unless... I don't know if there's something like substitutes in Parliament, if someone... Uh, if you can go on maternal or parent, parent, parental leave uh, and then someone else uh, replaces you as a member of the parliament, but your term hasn't ended yet. I'm not sure if that's a thing or not. I, I don't know. That's the only idea I have right now, but I don't know how that would be modeled. Um, I would probably trust Wikipedia on this one. Um, we could check the website of the parliament, but maybe we can leave that aside for now. Um, Well, the question is if there's anything else to talk about. Are there, I feel like we've maybe done a bit too much Sparkle at once. Does most of this make sense or are there any questions um, about the Sparkle part of this? Uh, where well, I should explain something again, maybe. Uh, otherwise, one thing I could mention is if we ignore these for a moment then and remove this then we can abbreviate this we have um, three things starting with a statement we can first of all abbreviate this like before by leaving this out and with a shift tab by the way you can um, fix the indentation so that it's all aligned here uh, but what you can also do you have this variable here, the statement, this auxiliary, auxiliary variable, and it's only used here as a subject once and then never again. And you can abbreviate that by instead starting a block with these square brackets and then removing this, and then have these um, predicate object pairs here, and then at the end close the square brackets, and then this means the same thing. Uh, 
um, but it's shorter to write, so that can also be useful sometimes. So this would now again give us these um, 730 or something people we had earlier. 729, okay, uh, 28. So th this doesn't work if you want to do a minus or an option or anything, because then you need to have an actual variable name. But if you don't want that, then you can often use this uh, square brackets construct, which is pretty useful. We could have also done this over here. Instead of putting the owner in a variable, we could have said the owner should be a human and the owner's country of citizenship should be some country, which is P463, same item IDs as below. And then we wouldn't have the variables available anymore up here. But otherwise, this would mean the same thing and we should get the same five results. And that's just a more compact way to um, write the same query if you're not interested in what exactly this variable is, if you're just interested in it has these other statements, whatever they are. Uh, you want to script these queries and send them to the server and get CSV output back. Um, we have something for that. There's a button down here, code, which gives you the URL and if you query that directly, you get JSON back, I think. No, by default, you get XML back. Uh, let's add format equals JSON. And then we can get JSON that we can look up, look at in Firefox. Or you can add formal equals format equals, I think, CSV exists. Yeah, but Firefox will just let me download it again. So that's not as helpful, um, but there's also example code here for how to work with it in various programming languages. Uh, you can embed it as an iframe, you can have it as a wiki link, um, write some JavaScript to get it, or Python, or whatever. Um, basically, the thing you do in all of these is the same. You send to https query wikidata.org slash sparkle this query and either use a get or a post request and the um, query parameter should be this query. Uh, maybe in the URL it's better visible like this. And then you can optionally add a format or an accept header or something and that can be CSV or JSON or XML or something else. And then you get the results in that format. And I think, yeah, the support formats I think are XML JSON, CSV, TSV, I think as well. And I don't remember if there are any others, but those four at least, I think. Um, is there a JS library to read this JSON? Um, I'm not sure. I think the example we have here just does JSON and or JSON.parse uh, and then a console log or something. But there are probably some JSON uh, JavaScript libraries. I think one that's relatively recent, but could be useful is what is it called Comunica. Comunica framework, I think. Right. Thank you, Google. If you would let me see the results. Yeah, it's a brand new browser profile and that's what I get. Uh, as punishment. So this Comunica thing is supposed to be all kinds of um, RDF and Sparkle things which you can plug together and I'm sure there are some useful things in there to uh, write queries from JavaScript. So that might be something useful if you uh, don't want to work with the JSON itself. But uh, the JSON also doesn't look that complicated I would say. Oops, wait, I need to add uh, format equals JSON, and then maybe we can look at it here. It has this head where it tells you what the variables are. And then in the results, you have this long array of bindings, and each of them has the variables. And then it's uh, sometimes the literal, it can be URI, or 
yeah, I think those are actually the two kinds of values in, you can get back. Literal, which can have a language or a data type, and or it can be URI, and in either case it has this value. And that's most of what there is in this JSON format, I think. So hopefully you can uh, work with that directly. Okay. Um, one thing we still had earlier, uh, unless there's a different question, let me just wait for them to finish typing. Um, but we could still do this thing where we calculate the age of the cats. Okay, question answered. Um, then let's maybe go back to this and say we want any cat with a date of birth, remove everything else. And then we want the age of the cat, which we will put in the variable called age. And the way to do that, the age isn't directly uh, stored anywhere on Wikidata because it's redundant with the date of birth and it will change all the time. But we can calculate it by saying, um, we want to bind a new variable and that will be something as the age and the something will be the difference of the date of birth and no other way around uh, now minus date of birth and now is a function that returns the current time and that is going to give us a difference in days so we would want to um, divide this by uh, by what exactly? If we divide it by 365.24.25, then we get the age in average Gregorian years, which I guess might be useful. And then we want the floor of that, maybe. I'm not sure if that's a good approximation of the age. Oh, and then there's this uh, rubbish, which looks very confusing. Uh, let's look at it on Wikidata. That makes it hopefully a bit more clear. Uh, this means that the date of birth is unknown, or um, technically that's called a sum value, and we don't want that. So we want to say that the uh, we want to filter only for values where it's not is sum value. I think that's the function name. Date of birth. Yes, that looks better. Uh, we can sort by that. Okay, and uh, now we have removed these so-called sum values, uh, where it's sum value, but, but we don't know exactly what it is. Uh, so we only want those where it's not sum value, it's a real value. And maybe we don't want the age of the cat now, because this cat is uh, very much dead. Um, but we want... Um, we have the date of death here already. Uh, let's add that actually, date of death. Um, we would like to have the difference of the date of death and the date of birth, or if the date of death doesn't exist, then we want the difference with the current time instead. And one way to write that, which is a bit complicated, would be to bind um, the floor of, and let's keep that part the same, but if um, the date of death is bound, then we want to use the date of death. Otherwise, we want to use now. And all that is an expression, um, which is either date of death or the current time. And then we want to subtract from that date of birth, finish the uh, if we need to actually, what now this apparently is there, close that, then do the division as age, and maybe uh, adding a few more line breaks makes this a bit more readable, not sure. But that would be the age of the cat at death or um, the current age if it's still alive. Let's see if that looks correct. This cat lived 
Uh -huh. And that's the thing. It lived for five years, I would say. But if we divide by 365.24.5, that is probably just under five years, and then it gets rounded down to four. So I still don't know a good trick to actually calculate or take a difference in days and calculate it in years because it gets complicated to do uh, leap days. But well, um, and we can, anyways, I, I wanted to show this if construct because that's sometimes useful and the bound function which tells you if the variable is uh, bound to something or not which we uh, saw earlier with this filter not bound of date of death which would mean the same as a minus and here we're using it in an if but there's actually a simpler way to do that which is called the function uh, coalesce of the date of death and now And that means the same thing as what we just had, or it's kind of the date of death. And if that doesn't work, then it falls back to now. And you can also have uh, multiple things here, like if there was some other variable, then you could put that here as well and have this kind of fallback chain from date of death to something else, to something else, to now, or whatever you want. And that's a lot more convenient than this uh, if bound then else construct that we had earlier. Uh, so that would be one approach to get more or less the age. Maybe we just shouldn't uh, round it at all. Uh, does that look more reasonable? Well, now it's going to say yeah, this cat is 4.996680 years old. Great. And this cat is 9.9988 years old. Yeah. Um, it doesn't quite work, but... Oh! Oh, here we actually have a cat with... Which was born in 1912, but didn't die. Or we don't have a date of death for the cat yet. That's not good. Uh, well, if we use round, then a cat that's four and a half years old gets five years old already. That's what I want to avoid, kind of. Um, but um, that would also be an option. I think I would probably, if I had to use this for anything, I would probably download the, or make the query return the date of birth and date of death, and use in whatever programming language I'm using uh, the proper date functions to calculate the difference in years instead of trying to do that in Sparkle. That might be something that's better suited for another library. Hmm. Do we want to do anything with this cat? Does it... Oh, it only has a German Wikipedia article. Uh, it died after 1928. Okay. We could add, let's maybe try to add date of death, let's say roughly 1930, uh, but set the precision to, uh, we don't know what decade it was, I'm guessing roughly 1930, but let's set the precision to century and earliest date 1929, because Wikipedia said it was after 1928. And we imported that from German Wikipedia and the Wikimedia import URL is this permanent link. And that's better than nothing, I think. And this trick that I did with entering uh, not just 20th century, uh, but adding specifically the date 1930 is that in the query uh, it will now still appear as 1930 with precision century, but if you're not looking at precision, then 1930 is better than 1999 or whatever the default is going to be. I think the default would actually be 2000, uh, the latest possible date in the 20th century. Um, yeah, there's also 
Oh, this cat, the French space cat, which doesn't have a date of death. Didn't that one die in space? I don't remember. Or... Hmm. I'm not sure what happened to this cat. She was monitored throughout the flight. Oh, so you survived the flight, okay. And then... Legacy Aftermath. Felicet was killed two months after the launch. Well, we can add that. Um, so that would be in uh, 1963, presumably. December, probably? Or is there a reference that has it more specifically? Not sure if I'm up for reading a French article now to find out when the cat died. Uh, wait there, I should check what's in chat. Is, is there a property for an object reflecting the date of the last modification? Yes, I think that's the one that exists. Please show me my choices. Uh, no, 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 let's abort that. Um, that would be of the house cat. I think it's the, what is it? Uh, schema. It's in schema.org, the date modified. Let's call that edited. And let's say maybe we want to order by the descending edited date. And then we see that this one, oh yeah, that's the edit I just made, which uh, this one was edited today. Um, and Felicet was edited yesterday, and Larry was edited on 25 December. So uh, schema date modified is what you're looking for. That gets you the edit date. What you don't have is the date when it was first created. You can s vaguely estimate it from the item ID, but that's not available for queries when the item was created. But you have the last edit time at least. Um, Using Wikidata on my website with interaction, user can filter, should I cache Wikidata or work live? Uh, I think working live would probably be better. Um, if it's a very expensive query, then may maybe it would make sense to cache it. Um, yeah, but queries are also cached for, I believe, 60 seconds. So if I send this query right again, so it used to take 400 milliseconds, now it takes 100, 175, that's actually pretty long, 40 milliseconds. So all of this is cached, uh, but as soon as I make any change to query, even if I just add a space, then it runs again and takes a bit longer. But yeah, if you get the exact same query, then it's cached for, I think, 60 seconds at least. Um, yeah which can also be useful like if you made an edit and are waiting for it to appear in the query service, then you can keep adding spaces to bypass the cache if you need to. Uh, yeah, there's a Grafana dashboard with the query service. Um, I think usually you can work live with Wikidata, uh, would be my answer. Anything else? Is Wikidata a good source for which countries are democracies? Or is that better to find elsewhere? Jeez. I don't know if we have that information. Uh, do we have... Uh, no, wait, that one... I don't remember. Let's do a different country. Uh... Sure, Brazil. Let's search for Brazil and see if that has any statements saying whether it's a democracy or not. Um, it'll take ages to load, unfortunately. Oh, there it is. Okay. And a bit longer to render fully. 
It's not an in It's not an instance of democracy at least. It's sovereign state, secular state, Rechtsstaat. Really? Don't we have an English label for that? And it's a country. Uh the website is slowing down the browser. Let's try waiting, but mm. it's part of things. It has life expectancy. Democracy, is that something that we have? Oh, the basic form of government. It's a federal republic, a representative democracy, and a presidential regime. Yeah, you could search for countries that are representative democracies or not. That would be an option. Let's try that. Let's start with... Um, I have this query ready uh, because you need it from time to time and it's not trivial. UN member states. Let's start with all of the UN member states and check if they are uh, democracies or not. So we would search probably for um, whether the state is basic form of government. Um, oh, yes, and we haven't seen that at all yet. Um, representative democracy. So let's make that optional. And if that exists, then we bind true as representative democracy and put that up here and then we should get all the UN member states and most of them are no a lot of them aren't supposedly let's see if that's true um, this is all Algeria I'm not sure if that's a representative democracy or a democracy let's open a few more of them Uzbekistan, Chile. I think Chile has is some kind of democracy, isn't it? Uh, please don't take that out of context. Uh, let's see if it has the statement, because it probably has, it might have a statement, the basic form of government is democracy and not representative democracy or some other item, uh, which would then uh, lead me to something else that I really should show in any query service workshop and haven't done yet. So let's search for democracy on this page once it recovers. It's being very slow right now. And I'm sure the local recording that I'm doing isn't exactly helping, but well, there we go. Democracy. It's a democratic republic. See. Um, but a democratic republic is a subclass of a democracy. So what we really want is anything that's a subclass of a democracy, right? So uh, first of all, that would be something like, uh, we could call this a form. And then we want that the form is a subclass of democracy. And then we would get uh, let's make it not optional for now, just to see how many results we get. 40. And we can abbreviate this. Um, so we could do the same thing as earlier. Remove the subject and use these square brackets. But actually, if you only have a single triple in these square brackets, then you can abbreviate that even further and put a slash here. And then it's kind of a path. Uh, from the state, you first follow this link basic form of government, and then you follow this second link subclass of, and then you want to end up at democracy. And that should give us the same 40 results. But now the problem is, if we have something that's a subclass or a sub of a subclass of democracy, or a subclass of a subclass of a subclass, then it's not returned by this. And also if something directly has the a basic form of government democracy then it's not going to be found because democracy doesn't have this second link to itself and what we do to fix that and what you especially want often with this specific property subclass of is put a star after it and then this means there can be 
any number of these subclass of connections. It can be uh, it can be directly basic form of government democracy. It can be a subclass of democracy, a subclass of a subclass of democracy, and so on. And I have that up here as well, actually, instance of any number of subclasses of a sovereign state. So this P31 instance of, and then any number of subclass of, this is a combination that you will use pretty often, uh, which is why I definitely should have shown it maybe earlier, but at least we have it now. And now we have 88 representative, um, this is the wrong variable name, 88 democracies of any kind. That would still leave over half of them as not democracies. I'm not sure if I believe that. Let's add the label service, state label. Oops, and this needs to be democracy. 193 UN member states. I think that's the correct number. 193 sounds correct. And what is not a democracy? Danish realm. I... Is that a UN member state? Oh, is that the name of it now? I think I know it as the Kingdom of Denmark, Realm of Denmark. Okay, okay, yes, then that's correct. Danish realm which is constituted of, what was it, Denmark and I think Greenland. Oh yeah, Faroe Islands and Greenland, yeah. And then the Kingdom of the Netherlands has some similar complications. And I guess it doesn't have a basic form of government, which might even be true because Denmark and Greenland and the Faroe Islands might have three different forms of uh, government for all I know. Uh, yeah, I think Thailand is actually a monarchy, isn't it? Australia. Yeah, see, I'm pretty sure some of these are democracies. And uh, so, yeah, we probably do not have um, all of these basic form of government statements yet, which you would expect. Yeah, there's just nothing. Democrat, anything. Basic form of government, parliamentary monarchy. Oh, right, right, they have a queen. Uh, I don't know. Should still count as a democracy, right? Of some kind. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's all complicated. Um, yeah, but I assume some of these should have uh, democracy. Let's just egoistically check Germany. Germany has it. Hmm, People's Republic of China has it, I see. United States of America has it. Canada, I don't know. Canada doesn't have it. Oh, right, a non-monarchy, theoretically. Oh, and we have Denmark here. So we have Denmark. Mm, I think I just stopped screen sharing for some reason. Uh, let me... Try to start it again. Not sure what happened there. And also switch the webcam back to full screen so that OBS can record it. Sorry. Uh, and I probably missed a lot of chat messages. Um, I'm back, okay. Yeah, I think we are missing these um, form of government statements. And also we have Denmark and the Danish realm, or what the name was, both in the query, which I don't think is correct. It should be one or the other. We also have the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Okay, we don't have the Netherlands, so that's correct. But I'm pretty sure one of these Danish results is not correct. I'm not sure which one. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely arguable, but at least we talked about this um, subclass off with the star construct, which is pretty important. Um, similar to the star, there is a plus, and then it means there has to be at least one of these links, so that would mean the basic form of government can be a subclass of democracy, or a subclass or a subclass or something, but it can't be democracy directly. It's not useful very often, but I thought I would mention it at least. 
um, but the star is what you usually want, especially with subclass off. Or also, uh, if you have the property located within the administrative territorial entity, come on, not autocompleting for some reason. It's P131 anyways. Uh, there, it also often makes sense to have the star. So you're searching for something that's in Berlin, Kreuzberg, which is in Berlin, the city, which is in Berlin, the state, which is in Germany, which is blah, 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 blah. So that's also another use case where you use this fairly often. Uh, yeah, we have 20 more minutes, apparently. Um, and one query that I thought we could try to write, which we haven't done yet, and which will also show something new, is works that will enter the public domain in a few days. And I'm sure this query exists already somewhere, but let's uh, write it anyways for fun. So that would be, I think, uh, so the copyright law varies uh, by state, um, but in the United States, let's limit the query to the United States just for simplicity, it would be, I think, life plus 70 years, so anyone who died in 1950 is going to enter the public domain next year. So we would search for a work with a label by a author, author label that's also limited to authors and other kinds of creators, um, date of death, where the work has the author, author, and I'm not saying what kind of work it is, could be a novel or something else, as long as it has an author. And the author is definitely a human. And in this case, I'm not adding subclass off here because we don't really have subclasses of human, or we shouldn't have at least, but the author should also have a country of citizenship United States, so that hopefully US copyright applies. And date of death. Of death. And we want to filter for this. Uh, we could say the year of the date of death should be 1950. And then that will hopefully return some results and not too many and not overwhelm the query service. Uh, we will see. And then we can also write this uh, filter a bit more efficiently, uh, but I thought I could do this one first. And then afterwards, oh, there's two questions. Query like seam data and something else. We will see that. Okay, we can do that afterwards. We have 1,199 results. Um, we have some of them. No, that's different. Okay, just look similar. Edgar Rice Burroughs has a lot of works, Jesus. Joseph Schumpeter, Henri Francois Pitier, lots of them. Um, and the more efficient way to do this filter, so it hopefully doesn't take 12 seconds, would be to filter that the date of death is greater than or equal to 1950. And we mark that as a date time literal and the date of death is less than 1951. And with this double caret, uh, you specify the data type. In this case, it's a date time. You can also have literals for geo coordinates and other things. Let's see if this is any faster. Nine seconds instead of 12. It's a bit faster. Same number of results at least. Uh, if we add a special hint here, the prior triple is range safe. Uh, that's pretty technical, but that should make it even more efficient. Yeah, one point something seconds. Then this filter becomes a lot more efficient. Um, but maybe we want to say, uh, we want to order by the most famous works. So let's query for the uh, number of site links that the work has. Add that somewhere here and order by descending site links. 
so that we get the works with the most site links first. So that's the number of Wikipedia articles, wiki source pages, uh, comments, categories, whatever is linked to this item. And then the top one is a princess of Mars, which I have not heard of, but I guess, I guess this must be the author of Tarzan. Yeah. And so these would be probably uh, some works that are going to enter the public domain in a few days. I'm not a lawyer. Don't take this as legal advice. I'm sure there's a better list somewhere, but um, that is what I would, how I would write it as a query at least. Um, there's also a property for public domain date. I guess it's not yet. Yeah, it sounds like it's not very complete. Um, query like scene data and the other thing, how to get from a wiki table to the same thing as a query. You mean list of presidents of the U United States. Um, this is almost certainly a hand maintained list. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I can answer that question. If a uh, listeria is if you have the query and want to have a wiki list uh, from the query, which um, and for that there's this template wiki data list and on some Wikipedias you're allowed to use that in articles and on others you're not allowed to use it. Well, it varies. I think this one Oh, it doesn't say if it's allowed or not. I don't I don't remember if it's allowed on English Wikipedia. But that's if you have a query and want the table from that. If you have the table and it's not based on a Wikidata query, then you basically have to write the query yourself, I think. I don't have a better answer than that. You need to know how this list was compiled and then try to write the same criteria into your Sparkle query. I guess that's the best answer I have. Uh, yeah, you have to reverse engineer the list, exactly. If if it doesn't have this line and the header and it says this list is automatically generated, if it doesn't have that, then it's a handwritten list. Um, we can probably see, do we have some examples there? No. Uh, what links here hide links wikipedia academic studies of wikipedia so this yeah if it has something like this or it might look a bit different depending on wikipedia because they can all style the template differently but i think most of the wikipedia versions of this template have at least this uh, blue line here if it has that and these links to update the list now or something then it's an automatic list um, maintained by this bot, uh, this Listeria thing. If it doesn't have that, then it's a handwritten table, I'm afraid. And that's probably true for most tables, at least on English Wikipedia. I think some other Wikipedias have a lot more Wikidata lists, but I'm not sure. Um, oh yeah, right, there is also a property uh, Sparkle equivalent, if we go to the Wikidata item here, maybe it has that. Uh, yes, Wikidata Sparkle query equivalent exists for some of them. And it does not contain a Sparkle query for reasons. It contains a fragment of a Sparkle query, but that's how it is. Um, so if someone puts this Wikidata Sparkle query equivalent statement on the item, then you're in luck and you can use that and don't have to reverse engineer the query yourself, I guess. 44 results, yes, that's correct. Trump is the 45th president, but one of them was president twice. And that's uh, why this select distinct doesn't find them. I think if we remove the distinct, then we get... Oh no, right. Um, we still get 44 because uh, this only can match uh, once. Okay. Um, and then there is, there was also the question of querying uh, lexicographic data. 
So uh, any specific example queries that you have in mind that we could write for lexicographical data? Otherwise we could search for Headset decided that was a perfect moment to give me a, some time to think and turn itself off. Um, what kind of lexemes would be interesting to query for? Uh, uh, let's search for. Oh, wait, there's something in the chat. Okay. Nothing specific. Let's search for all the forms of the German Lexeme Luftballon, for instance. So that would be, let's just write select star for now and then worry about what should be there later. We have the Lexeme L99, um, which is this, oops, wait, that needs to be Lexeme L99. So we can search for the normal statements it has, like for uh, just like for an item, for instance, it's uh, could search for any lexeme that combines Luft with something else. So let's say the lexeme combines Luft. Uh, oh, it has to be lexeme, of course. Um, so I can search for that, L11824, and also some other word, and we want that other word to not be the same as L11824, otherwise it just matches everywhere. So we're searching for all lexemes which uh, are combined of Luft and something else. And we want to have of this lexeme the Wikibase lemma, which is the text up here, and call that lemma. And we want to have of the other word the lemma as well, and call that the oops other lemma. And then we see Luftballon, which combines Luft with Ballon, and we have Zugluft, which combines Luft with Zug. Um, yeah, and there is a page, I'm not sure where it's linked actually, it's, so this is the reference for, um, what all these different triples are. So here you would find the things we've already seen. There's a whole overview of, we've seen WD, WT so far, and P, PS, PQ. We have skipped over PSV or everything. We have skipped over references. So you can find more information here. But about lexicographical data, is that linked here anywhere? Yes, it is. So there's some information about Wikibase Lemma is what we've used right now. A lexeme also has a language, which is linked under this. And a lexical category, such as noun for the one we looked at right now. Um, so this is where you would find more information about that if you want to look it up. Um, words that mean cat. So that would be any word uh, with a onto lex sense, which we put in the sense variable. And then the sense should have a statement item for this sense. And that should be cat. And also let's again add um, the lemma of the lexeme, just so we can show it. Lexeme lemma. And then we have cot, we have this, which is some form of sign language, I believe. Catus, which is MT, whatever language MT is. Actually, let's add the language as well. DCT language, language, and the language is an item. So if we add the label service, we can select the language label. 
That's better. So this was British Sign Language. It's Polish. Maltese is empty. I see. There's reconstructed proto proto brythonic and proto Celtic. Lots of words meaning cat. Uh, and here we have, for some reason, different ones in. Oh, okay. So these are in three different language codes. I'm not sure if they pop up with the. No, it's not showing up in the screen share. But there's a pop up here saying that this is in language code NAN, and this is in language code NAN XQ559173, and this is in language code NAN XQ56929. So I assume those language codes can sometimes mean different things, even though here it's the same thing. There's also Gato in Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese. Yeah, but this is how you would uh, search for the census of a lexeme, and the sense is a part of the lexeme uh, right here, but it can link to the item for this sense, and that's how we can then link them all together through these items. Dialects in lexemes, how are they represented? Yeah, either as multiple. Uh, lemmas or representations on the same lexeme like we had here. Uh, this one is returned twice with the same language code for some reason. Um, let's go to this Niao. You can have multiple lemmas with these different language codes. Oh, I see this one is also the same language, but this is uh, the item for Uh, Chinese characters, for instance, and then this is the item for probably some romanization, and the other one is the item for some other, yeah, one transcription system, and then this is probably some other transcription system. So I guess this isn't exactly an example of dialects, really. Um, I'm not sure how we man map model dialect, actually. Probably with separate lexemes, I would guess. Uh, and yes, I'm about to run out of time, so we have location of sense usage. Okay. Location of sense usage. Do we have a lot of lexemes that link to this? Let's go to the property, check what links here in the lexeme namespace. Yeah, that's about what I thought. 43 uses in the entire Lexeme namespace. Crikey, for instance, is used in the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. Or hammock. Oh, pants is interesting. That's a good example. Because in the United Kingdom, the sense is underwear, and in North America, the sense is trousers. That's a fun example of this location of sense usage. That's a good point. Brötchen, uh, Semmel, Rundstück. That's, yeah, that's probably... So those would definitely be different lexemes. And then with... You could either say in the language field that the language is actually not standard German, but some dialect. Or you could have this uh, location of the sense usage and then point to some geographic region using that. But I'm not sure if we have a lot of examples of that. Do we have this, for instance? We don't. OK. Uh, Right. But I guess we are mostly done for now, so maybe um, I will stop the recording and then if you have any more questions, you can find me on Twitter something or something, but I will maybe then take a break and uh, leave this meetup room as well. But yeah, I hope 
this was um, educational and enjoyable and whatnot. And yeah, any last minute questions? Recommend a tutorial for working with Lexemes. Uh, I'm not sure if we have one. Leah is writing something. Uh, or not. Do we have tutorials for Lexemes? Lexicographical data. Not really. Uh, we have some documentation, but yeah, I'm not sure if we have a good. We have an introduction with this image here where every few months someone on Telegram realizes, wait, isn't this wrong? And then the image gets edited again. Uh, not sure if this is useful. I haven't looked at this page in detail before, but maybe. Um, yeah. All right, then I hope you will enjoy the rest of this uh, remote chaos experience or whatever it is and have a nice end of the year otherwise. And uh, see you. <laughs>